What's up, YouTube? Am I back with another Spellforce free replay cast? Check. Does this replay not include Dark Elves? Check. Is it in 1440p? Check. Oh my goodness, this is getting pretty good. Is there a tournament league coming up that you can sign up to? Check. Are there even tournaments for new players planned? Next week, perhaps? Check. Wow, okay, well, let's get into the game. Zero in the blue color, gonna be playing as the orcs. And on the other side, we got the Dwarfing Dwarf playing the dwarfs. It's Levatus. Yeah, it's his known name. Uh, played several tournaments with it, so uh, we're not gonna keep guessing. It is Levatus 100%, goes for the high Hierophant. Whereas on the other side, we are obviously seeing the Occultist, a very standard pick at the moment. The Goblin kind of not worth it. Uh, so let's see if the upcoming patch does try to uh, address this. I, I I might have a video up by the time this goes uh, live, to be honest, about the patch. Uh, hopefully there will be some updated patch notes. But yeah, it's, it's going to be like a, a smaller balanced patch with some networking improvements as well. So yes, Spellforce 3 is still being kept alive by the developers. In fact, a bit of news in case you haven't read my uh, community tab. I am actually uh, leaving my job at the Creative Assembly at the end of October 2022. And I'll be joining Grimlore Games, not to work on Spellforce. That's, this is actually the game they made. But on the next one called Project Minerva, which is going to be a... Uh, an action RPG game, open world. Can't say what it is. But it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be... Uh, it's, it's gonna have an ancient setting. You will see. I'm sure at some point it will be announced. Not sure when. I don't even know that. But anyway, I'll be a principal designer on that team. Looking very much forward to it, to meeting the new people. And while it's hard to leave Creative Assembly, I've been there for seven years. Uh, working on Halo Wars 2, Total War, Warhammer, that is, uh, 2 and 3. Lots of DLCs, uh, lots of multiplayer towards the end, lots of quest battles towards the middle. And lots of learning towards the beginning, of course. But it's been a great ride. I usually don't talk in videos about this, and every time I mention it, uh, people are like, Whoa, what's going on? So I thought I'd do it for a change while the early game begins here. But anyway, let's go over the build order. So at the beginning, the orcs, as usual, must have gone for five lumber mills and uh, the double hunting cabin over here. Uh, another hunting cabin and the lumber mill. Lumber mill first. Uh, that way you can keep your eco going. Surprised this didn't get upgraded, but makes a lot of sense. And I really like that players have... Um, Actually not gone completely across, but taken a, a right because you can connect your bases a bit better. So this is going to be reaching level 3 here. And uh, that's a little faster than the Hierophant. But at the same time, that's also kind of normal. But let's take a look at the skills as well. So start with zero here. Uh, we have got Blood Sacrifice, which paints enemy enemies to bleed freely. Um, then you got Blood Confluence, which is... Uh, using that blood to leech health from enemies. So every time you do this, you heal the occultist back up and you do the leeching damage as pure damage. Also, everything that the occultist has only costs uh, health. There's no focus for this guy whatsoever. Demonic Pact is, you've seen it, it's the dreaded circle. Cannot walk out of it or you take damage, but stay within and your weapon damage goes bonkers. You also hit two additional targets, so a to total of three. Uh, we've got Death Resilience at level one. So if you're dropping to low health, you're going to get resistances, and you can keep stacking that. At the top level, uh, for each 25% health loss, you gain extra 10 resistances. Very strong. Occult is super hard to kill. And we got two points in Brute Force, one point in Nullify, which will pull enemies closer to you. Now, the Hierophant is at level 3 right now. We've had Bone Breaker, which is a knockback and stun. We've got Kill Shot, which is just single target damage. And we got Scatter Shot Ammunition, which is a... Uh, you, you get two shots instead of one shot on, on your normal attack. But limited ammunition, that's the free over her head. So you gotta keep reloading this. 
Uh, but then we got the Totem of Flames, of course, you've seen that a few times now. It basically has as much DPS as the Hierophant herself, so pretty good stuff. And now we've got level 3, so a Brute Force has been added and Double Deep Waters has been added too. Wonder what she bought? Nothing. Um, you kind of need 5k to buy the better crossbow, and that is the item that you really want to get with the High Hierophant. But the one tough thing about this matchup is... It's really, how do you deal with the Nullify from the Occultist, right? Uh, the Orc is going to be wanting to go for a fast tier 2. All right. And we'll get some Hunters out. A, a little bit of Goblins don't hurt, of course, but... You know, on the way to Good. tier 2, you can do that anyway. Um, let, let's check. We've got a Ceremonial right. Armor level 3, we'll purple. And that puts the resistance at 40, Fair 50, enough. 40. Let's so that's a really, break. really strong Next start. And tier 2 has been clicked. My goodness, these workers are chatty. <laughs> uh, Risen Cow Rock is coming in finally. And we've got a bunch of Frontier Outposts. Uh, there will be a grand total of three Iron Sectors for now. But I'm pretty sure the Occultus is heading over here. That's another Iron Sector. Very important to grab. And that should set up the economy for the orcs. Now, the next thing, however, would be to, to start securing the middle. And I'm thinking Dwarfing Dwarf might be starting to look at that. Oh, interesting to break through here. I guess the dwarves are also interested in uh, securing a safe source of iron. And it doesn't look like this is going to be it, though. So let's see where we go. I don't think five Axe Wheelers can take this down, not with the Occultus defending it. Look at this. The bleeding is going to be applied. Oh, but knockdown on the Occultus happens. Is it quick enough, though? The Axe Wheeler, I think, might actually go down. Oh. Oh, six. Uh, dead on the last tick. That is so calculated. <laughs> well done. Two, zero. And yeah, that's another clan standard secured. Very good. Got a handful of goblins, so you can pull the Medusa with this. Kind of want to try to pull like two or three, not the fourth. Uh, then the Occultus can hit all three with its attack. Okay, all four, I guess. That's gonna be all right because he he can life leech a little bit, right? So shouldn't be too too bad. You obviously want to let your uh, bleeding effect go a little bit, um, not all the way because you don't want to risk it going off. Although you could always reapply it, but yeah, you do want to leech off it at the very last possible second just to regain a little bit of health. But that should be an easy level 5 here for the Occultist. Yeah, that's what you don't want to do. You want to let that blood uh, go a little bit, but either way, splitting hairs at this point in the game, it's much more important when it comes to uh, big army engagements, right? Like you're talking about uh, 6 or 7 Axe Wielders and them not getting the bleeding. But well, these things actually cost resources, whereas the Medusa you just killed for free and everybody will regenerate anyway. But for zero, we have got level five and uh, also Brute Force three and Death Resilience two have been picked up meanwhile at level four. Sanguine Burst is uh, just gonna do a detonation on enemies that have a bleeding affliction, dealing massive, massive, massive magic damage. Look at this, 390 magic damage. You multiply that by whatever the negative resistance is of the enemies and you get a killer weapon right there. And then we've applied Blood Like Tar, which is a bleed and impair. What a powerful hero this is. Anyways, for the Hierophant, we are also on level 5 right now. And two ability points are ready to go. So whenever Levatus is ready. This is a Town Hall. Uh, tier 2 has not been queued. Strangely, in the Iron Sectors, we have the Stone Halls. I mean, it's a super safe location, don't get me wrong. But the reinforcement distance is going to be brutal. Um, you can't even securely connect these God Stones, because this isn't in your sector. This doesn't really belong to you. The hero just clicks this and should be able to take it away. Anyhow, for for the higher friend hero, we've got the Garments level 3. Uh, so that improves our resistances pretty nicely. And we've got the half Fury. Uh, the, the Skyrushot ammunition becomes increasingly powerful as you, as you, uh, upgrade your weapons. And as you put further points into Brute Force, of course. But it looks like prefer preference was with Bonebreaker level 2, 
which also includes a stun now of level uh, of two to three seconds. I'd still like to see the upgrade to scattershot ammunition so that three targets get hit. But I think the units are gonna be fine to take out this. I am not sure the orcs have much to offer in retaliation right now. That's a little bit too many sentries. So they can threaten even the occultist. A lot of workers have been killed, so that will give the Hierophant a little bit of experience. Ditto for these other guys. It's five XP per worker, as you can see, these little pop-ups. So anyway, Barrage has been picked up. That's the big boom ability. Definitely for the dwarves. And we got a handful of weakening orbs. Very important to, to buy those at the merchant uh, when you're trying to fight the occultist. You need something to weaken that thing. And ideally, I would have liked to see this Ice Wyvern also getting taken down by the dwarves, but they haven't opted for it, so no worries anyway. We've got tier 2, 40 orcs. Uh, they've gotten themselves their warpit over here, and research brutes and, and hunters. So hunters are going to be the unit of choice at the beginning here of the tier 2 phase. And orcs have secured the middle for the most part, but minus <laughs> 19 iron. That is going to be a second to to come in. I would have liked to see a handful of uh, scouting post upgrades first. Because these are really easy to take down, as you can see. Frontier outposts, not so much. So those those you can handle much more easily. But now the hunter is going to block the production for that. The upgrade, rather. And while the occultist is taking down a handful of the axe wielders, it's nowhere near enough. But we've got... The hunters in the back trying to make something happen against the sentries. So, you know, you gotta start for that. But if the dwarves take over the middle, the orcs are gonna start struggling suddenly. There is no iron in the middle, but there is the tier 3 resource, which actually is shared um, for these bases. So, the orc tier 3 resource, Black Ash, is over here around this tree. And the dwarven one, Moonsilver, is around this tent. Oh, they have to mine it from these big ass stones, though. Seeing a bunch of brutes on the field. Population count at 98 versus 82. It's starting to look pretty decent for the dwarves, but their army quality just isn't quite there, right? So they're gonna have to make something happen. I would love to see a weakening orb on that. Oh, actually, choosing to go for the for the hunters instead. And the uh, Hierophant gets a pretty good barrage off, but. If she were to get pulled back into the army, these hunters can do a number on her as none of them have died. They got, uh, they got damaged, right? But it's not a kill. And that's what you really need here. Oh, we got to teleport back. Nice knockdown on the hero, preventing any crazy pulls from happening. The barrage goes through, but the pull as well. And the hunters are doing a number on the Hierophant at 300 health. She even got the Sanguine Burst. Massive, massive damage being done to this hero right there. But the Dwarves being tier 2 now can make the Earth Shakers. So that will be pretty important. But the Occult is right in the middle of there. Just life leeches his way back to full health. Even though some health is reserved. This Hierophant getting real aggressive. Walking into the Hunters. Now the Scouting Post will be able to take these down as they got... Negative magic resistant. The scaling post itself fires magic uh, shots. So you focus these on the weak hunters. They will take it down, but currently the base is not being microed in that way. Got heavy the dwarves need every little bit of help they can get in this matchup. But if they get to the later phases of the game, get out some berserkers and all that good stuff. Everything's gonna change. Let's look around the map a little bit. Let's take a look at these iron mines. There's five iron mines here, my goodness. Another five, that's ten. Another five, that's fifteen. We can, we can meth. <laughs> that's a lot of iron mines, but the orcs will need a few more bases if they want to keep that up. Because they're going to mine this out quick. Fortunately for them, there's a lot to go around. Oh my goodness, this uh, poor miner is not doing the thing. Boy. You, you, you look confused. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. So this Hierophant will ideally be specking a little bit into health now. Um, she's a great tool to keep denying the occultist the surface area to 
to attack, like you can knock him out of the of the demonic pact and whatever. But you don't want to take these direct fights. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Okay, that was that was good. I'll admit. But the Occultus could have pulled her, uh, and then the hunters get like free salvos for free. Anyway. Don't take on the Storm Vibern? That wouldn't be the worst idea, honestly, with the orcs running. They can't see anymore. Just turn around. Do the thing. Uh, if they take it out in the open like that, I don't know. Uh, the knockdown doesn't affect the Occultus because it missed. Barrage still goes through. But this is what I'm talking about. The Hierophant just cannot take this. Constant pulling business. Oh my goodness, is there gonna be a Sanguine Burst on her? 96 health left only. Even a single normal attack would be able to kill her. The Hunter does it. So the army stays. And the Occultus can potentially heal himself back up again. Uh, let's take a look at the cooldowns. Okay, Blood Confluence is real far away, but just use the Sanguine Burst. And I wonder, have we gone for any cooldowns? Not yet, but we've got triple death resilience. So when this boy gets weak, he's not weak. He screams unlimited power, and there's no lightning attacks, but whatever. Same thing with blood. Anakin, he is not too weak. Next patch actually aiming to nerf this guy. Will be nice to see, maybe with some additional buffs to the, to the Gobo Shaman. Then we get some variety for this race. And at the moment, they kind of always go cultist. And this Hunter Brute mix is also extremely common. It looks like they kind of turned around the population zero now. Oh, 180 population. My goodness, the pull again on the Hierophant and the Hunter focus fire too strong. And everybody gets taken down. The uh, Earthshapers haven't had their ability research, so they can pop their shields to increase the resistances of their bodies and the brutes are just going to town on the town because are unfortunately not getting picked up either so this is all going to go in the dumpster that's a lot of stone for the orcs to pick up they'll never have to worry about stone ever again we've got a citadel though for the dwarves and that means you know what that means they're tier three they got a ton of iron 45 in the bank currently, so here we go. It is time for the Berserking. None of them are being produced as far as I can tell. Uh, several buildings are up, but not all are complete. So that could be a little bit awkward, especially with so much construction going on at the same time. Stonewall still at 70. Uh, some of them are disassembling themselves. What's going on? Where is all this disassembly? I actually can't tell. Okay, now we got it. And here come the Berserkers. It's gonna be only Berserkers, by the way. There's literally nothing else. Well, they're Shaper. Okay. <laughs> there is also no forge for the upgrades. So Dorfingdorf, Levatus here, is in a lot of trouble. 200 population against just 10. I think this is the part of the game where Orc just decides, yeah, I'm gonna right-click your bases, and then I'm gonna keep right-clicking your bases, and then they'll take your bases, and then they'll keep right-clicking your bases. It's a heavy snowball. They take the resources that your buildings have left behind, and they get even richer, and they make even more units. Never ends. Only way you can win is you take extremely efficient fights, and you don't let them take too many sectors, because we're starting to get to the tipping point where where the orcs can't be stopped, really. You got a lot of negative wood, but for how much is that gonna last? I don't know. I mean, the main is starting to run dry, right? So, they'll have spent a lot of resources on that, but also you get to recycle the lumber mills, which is a full refund of nine wood in this case. Okay, the orcs are not gonna be able to defend this. Even with 66 population. Yeah, there's just too many brutes and, and scoundrel. Scoundrel are pretty basic though, so... You know, this definitely is inflated population that you're seeing here. But can it cause trouble nonetheless? Hell yes. Okay, I think we might just fast forward this, because there's gonna have to be a fight at some point. Like, right here. 
Fight or die. Oh, 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 I see. <laughs> yes, go, my minions. <laughs> Berserkers are popping their ability and they're gonna try to take down Zero's Grand Cal Rock. Meanwhile, the Hierophant faked the teleport here, but uh, perfect response by Zero is not gonna allow this to happen and I think the game should just end right here, right now. The Grand Cal Rock don't care. It's getting out repaired currently versus the damage it's taking, or more or less, it's the same. Anyways, the last of the Berserkers will be falling and that was just a not so great attempt at trying to come back into this game. It is over. Zero takes it. Now, who could it be? Let me know in the comments. And let's take a look at these post-game graphs real quick. If you like the game, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button too. And you know what? Join the Discord, join the tournaments. Everything will be in the descriptions or the... Uh, pinned comments actually. Wow, look at those resources. <laughs> that, that's uh, Orc right there when they start snowballing. They just go up stonks. That's how it works. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.